You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring scripture with Dr. T. Michael W. Halcom and Dr. Frederick J. Long. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I'm Michael Halcom. I'm here with Fred Lung. And in this Grammar Point episode, we are discussing verbs. This is going to be a long, many series because there's a lot about to say. There's a lot to say about verbs. Yeah. So last time we were talking about verbs as words of action and words of being. And this time, I think we want to discuss the notions of subject and predicate. So Fred, yeah. why don't you get us going on that? And for yeah. those of you who are watching, I'm going to share some text from First John on the screen. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah. So this series and our grammar points help explain what we would be called some of the meta language, some of the language that we yeah. we we use to help explain efficiently what's going on. And so Michael talked about the predicate and the subject. So often uh, a sentence is broken down into the predicate part of it, which is the verb and all those things that kind of go with the verb. And then the subject, which is the, you know, usually the actor, the one that's doing the action of the verb or is involved in the state of being that's being affirmed. So a state of being would be like Paul, is an apostle so paul would be the subject and then the apostle would probably be what we call that the predicate nominative in greek so the predicate is the verbal part of it and then the subject is what's governing the action uh, of the verb and so um and then it, it's also helpful when we're talking about verbs to talk about them being uh, broad categories of transitive verbs and intransitive verbs Transitive has to do with the idea that something is conveyed or transferred in the action of the verb. So these verbs are going to have not only a subject, but also a direct object and maybe sometimes even a recipient. So I hit the ball to Larry. Mm. So I am the subject. Hitting is the verb of action. The ball would be the direct object. So the action of me, my hitting, is affecting this ball, and this ball is going out to somebody out. So verbs that can transfer things are called transitive verbs. And then you have intransitive verbs, uh, or verbs sometimes can be both, but an intransitive use of a verb or intransitive verbs, they don't transfer something. They're talking about states of being. Um, like I am fearful or I, um, I'm walking now. So I, I can use the verb walk to refer just to me, but then it can also have a transitive use. So I walk the dog. Um, so some verbs, when you start to look them up and we'll, we'll look at this next time in lexicons, it'll give us grammatical information and tell us transitive meanings of that verb or intransitive meanings and uses of that verb. So these verbs are really, verbs are really interesting. They attract in some things uh, depending on the meaning. So all of them are gonna have a subject with, uh, with, with the verb itself. Some will transfer something and that'll take a direct object. And sometimes that transfer will go to somebody else, and that's called the indirect object. So the things that a verb necessarily uses are called complements. And uh, one field of study of verbs is called valency theory. Valency has to do, uh, I, had, I, was a chem- I had some chemistry courses. So we have this proton neutron in the middle and around it are spinning electrons. And that's kind of what the verb is doing. It attracts these elements uh, to surround it. And so valency theory, when applied to verbs, is trying to understand how many types of complements will attend a verb in use. If it's an intransitive, it's just going to have a subject. So it's going to be one valency. If it's, if it's a bivalent, it's going to have a direct object. And it may be trivalent. You might, you know, have some other thing. You're giving the ball to somebody. You know, I, the ball to somebody else. So that's called valency theory. And it's a very hot and important topic of study to understand verbs. So, yeah, I think that's, a, that's enough for now. Subject, predicate. And the predicate can have other things 
attending it like direct objects, indirect objects. And so, yeah, we, I think we, that's a good place to, to stop. Mm, well, I was thinking as you were, you were sharing that, I had one idea come to mind. Okay. Uh, maybe it would be helpful in these episodes. I kind of wish looking back on all the grammar point episodes, we've been doing this all along, but to actually give the Greek word for these grammatical terms we're yeah. discussing yeah. so long as it exists. For example, the word for verb is a rhema, right? Rhema. Uh, or the word for subject, right, is Um And I think the word, if I'm not mistaking, for pre- mistaken for predicate is kategorema, but I'd have to look that up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I know that uh, I know that rema is verb, and I know that subject is upokimenon, to mm-hmm. upokimenon, and I'm pretty sure predicate is to kategorema or object to uh, kategorema. Yeah, I think yeah. it's fascinating. Uh, I'd love to do the study or to read someone who's done the study of the conception of ancient. Of, of grammar from a, a Greek, ancient Greek perspective. Yeah, yeah. Eleanor Dickey's done some of that, yeah. but yeah, very good stuff. So, well, Fred, thanks. And uh, thank to you guys for watching and listening. We hope this helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills, but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glossa House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glossahouse.com today. Glossa House, language resources for the global community.